Okay, so the thermite reaction, it's one of the most well-known displacement reactions out there and it's just generally really fun to do. So I'll be showing you how to make a simple thermite mixture with fairly easy to get. The hardest thing to get really is the thing you use to light it because you need to use either magnesium or sparklers but we'll get to that later. So first you need just a container of water and you want to pour in as much table salt as you can find in a massive pile pretty much. Sort of make sure it dissolves a bit. You want to create what's known as a saturated solution where no more salt can dissolve. It doesn't have to be completely saturated but just put loads of salt in it. Then what you'll want is you'll want the metal that you're going to be reducing in the thing, so the thing that you need to convert to the oxide form. Um, mostly it's iron thermite, but copper thermite is easier to do on the setting it off stage and is generally cooler because copper is more reactive, so it reacts more vigorously and also the reaction takes place at higher than the boiling point of copper when it's going fully, so you get a really cool cloud of copper gas that is in no way incredibly dangerous. Oh, wait, it's gaseous copper. So yeah, you probably don't want to breathe that in, but it looks cool. It looks really cool. So what I'm just doing now is I'm getting a load of copper scraps I have lying around. Um, very, very corroded ones, as you can see. Just sort of wrapping it up with bits of old wire to sort of create a bundle of copper that I'm going to be reducing. You want to maximise the surface area on this copper, preferably. Just going to twist that round there so I've got a wire coming out. Actually, I'll need a wire for the other electrode. And you want to get this and you want to attach it to the positive terminal and just dunk it into your salty water or brine as it's known. You then want to get the other wire, attach that to the negative terminal of whatever power supply you want to use. Then you want to stick that in the water again, don't let it touch its general electrolysis rules. Get your power supply, stick it on as high as you want and set it going. So you want it to be only bubbling on the negative electrode preferably because if you're creating um, gas on the other electrode that's wasting power because you don't need to do that. And you basically want to leave it until you've got a load of stuff floating around. This can take a couple of hours so just leave it going and come back. Okay, so it's been a day since I last recorded, and I emptied everything out and just left it down on here. I've got my copper, you can see it's been greatly weathered. I've got some bits of salt around here, I obviously put a little too much salt in. And I've got what I'm really after, which is this filtered out copper oxide. I believe this is um, a copper 1 oxide. So now we need to convert it into copper 2 oxide, which is the black stuff. So we're just going to scrape it out of the filter paper and heat it strongly. Okay, so I've got all my copper oxide just scraped out into this thing here. And I'm just going to blast it with my torch to oxidise it down to the next level. So if I get my torch, light it up, and just slowly start heating it from underneath. Probably want to heat it more slowly from the top actually at the start because there's still a lot of water in this. Okay, so now we have our large amount of black copper 2 oxide just in here. Looks fairly good. 
it's a fair amount to be made actually so now the other thing you need for copper thermite of course is aluminium and I'll show you how to make that making the aluminium is actually a lot easier all you need is a block of aluminium a file and just some paper to catch it in so get this sort of piece of paper you're using to catch everything in put it in the vise put on your piece of aluminium and clamp your piece in the vise, that's the wrong way again I need to get my mount, vice mounted on the table again but I haven't got round to doing that and just set the vice up to sort of clear any of the collecting paper that's particularly in the way out the way and file for as long as you need to until you've got a fair amount of aluminium Now I've fold everything up. As you can see, I've got a fair amount of just. It's not the best aluminium powder. If you have a ball mill, that'll do it a lot better. But it works well enough for what I'm using it for. The final step in the process is of course just to get roughly equal parts copper oxide and aluminium and to mix the two together so that should be just about aluminium I'll add a little bit in excess since the aluminium is easier to make um, and I'll just get screwdriver because it's the closest thing to hand and just mix the two together into a single mixture again the finer you can get both of your powders this aluminium powder is nowhere near as fine as I'd like it to be but it will work so just keep mixing everything together until you've got a nice sort of black and shiny speckled mixture a lot like this okay the thermite is ready it's all in place and I'm just going to light off the magnesium fuse I put in the centre with my torch and this should be a good show. Maybe it needs a little more help to get it going. Well, I think we can say that worked. Didn't work quite as I expected it to, but when it did finally work, it worked very well. <laughs>